guys, Vol here. Those of you who've been following my channel for years and years and years will remember that I used to do a lot of casting for uh, Dawn of War, and then of course Dawn of War 2 when it came out, and then, uh, as you will probably know, um, the company that was developing the Dawn of War series went into liquidation, and yeah, no more updates, no more Dawn of War. Uh, Dawn of War was a fun game when it first came out, um, obviously ran into a lot of balance issues, Relic didn't really um, support it very well, and uh, it kind of died out. Um, I had a lot of fun with the game at the time, did a lot of really fun casting, but never really went back to it. Um, what you're watching here is a, uh, a captured replay that I've got um, of Dawn of War 2, the classic 2009 game, but uh, recently I've, I've realized that there's a group, there's a community on the internet that have made um, a mod for it, it's called Elite Mod, and basically what it's allowed uh, people to do is go back and play the original game with some of the balance changes and fixes that it really needed. And it's a bit of a tight net, sort of hardcore underground sort of community, very old game, not many people are into older style games like this, but I mean, just sort of, you know, give it, give it some props, give it a little bit of love on the internet, because a lot of people really like the Dawn of War series that I did back in the day. And uh, if you were thinking of ever going back to it and trying it, you might like to try out Elite Mod. In the description for this video, I'll just put a link to their website. Um, it's really easy to download, you just, just basically play it through Steam. And um, I had a bit of fun for it. Now, I'm not going to say that I'm actively going back and commentating on, on this game or playing it actively, but I did sort of jump on and play against the computer a bit to try to get um, a couple of one-on-one -on -one going with, with people who play. But yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a really old game now. But if you ever have that sort of urge to revisit the nostalgia, so to speak, no one ever cracked. The other cool thing is too that, you know, it's got an active community, so there are people who play it fairly intently and competitions and so forth, so you can download replays like I do and watch the higher level whatever is the skilling set that skill ceiling I should say. I uh, enjoy that. So this this game is actually one of those games that's part of um, some sort of competition. I managed to pick up the um, the replay from one of the top replay sites. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, GameReplays.org slash Dawn of War 2 slash replays, of course. And uh, they give you the options for expert replays, replay of the week, those sorts of things. This game, if you haven't already figured out and realized, it's um, Eldar with the Farseer hero up against Chaos with the uh, Chaos Lord. Now, I also noticed that they've added some new units. They've also added effectively a new sub faction where if you pick Space Marines as the faction you're playing, but the uh, the hero as the Grey Knights uh, hero, then you basically get access to some Grey Knights units and it's treated as a separate sub faction. So if you wanted to play as Grey Knights in Dawn of War 2, there is that option now. When Dawn of War 2 originally came out, it was just Space Marines, Eldar, Orcs, and Tyranids, and then the expansions added Chaos, and they added Imperial Guards, so those are all still in there. And of course you've got the newer maps and tile sets, but at the end of the day, it's a real-time strategy game. It's a fairly dinky little one, but I mean, if, if you're going for full-on real-time strategy, it's probably better off to play StarCraft 2. I mean, StarCraft 2 has gone through out of the Swarm, Legacy of the Voice still about to come out. I don't really play the Starcraft series as much these days, but um, I do watch the I do watch the online competitions like Gone TV with Artosis and Tasteless. That's always a good one to tune into. And um, hey guys, if you are into uh, watching commentaries for Dawn of War 2, um, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be putting them out on a regular basis. Um, if you want to watch commentaries, look up uh, some of the commentators in the Dawn of War 2 community. Uh, the one that I found was Indrid, I-N-D-R-I-D. Just have a look for him on YouTube and he'll be doing commentaries on this game and obviously in a better capacity than me because he understands the tactics and the strategies currently employed by Dawn of War 2 players. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was just surfing uh, YouTube one day and I found one of his commentaries and that's how I found out about Elite Mod. Uh, that got me into it. So yeah, speaking of Games Workshop games, I looked at Vermintide, that's coming out soon. Obviously Total War is doing a new Warhammer game. Uh, none of these games look too impressive. I might have a little bit of a rouse into them. But yeah, uh, Steam-wise, computer game-wise, I've been playing uh, a fair bit of Darkest Dungeon, that's a really cool RPG. I also had a crack at uh, Ori and the Blind Forest, if you like the Metroidvania style games, that's a really good one to go for, definitely recommend that one. 
Yeah, and uh, good old Games Workshop, eh? Um, I know that Women 40,000 is starting to die out. Uh, Warhammer Fantasy is pretty much gone. Um, Age of Sigmar, if you're into it, has replaced it, and uh, there's plenty of coverage on the internet about that without me needing to really go there. I've actually managed to sell off all of my 40k armies and all of my Warhammer Fantasy armies except for Eldar, and I think I've got my Chaos Warriors, although they are in quite bad condition because I tried selling them overseas and they got damaged. Yeah, um, so what's happening in this game? We've got uh, Chaos Blast, uh, Noise Marine Squad hasn't upgraded the Blast Master yet, but they're going to later. As far as I have figured out in terms of competitive Dawn of War 2 these days, it's really about um, just the arms race, taking up a little bit quicker than your opponent, making sure you don't fall too far behind on territory, and trying to destroy your opponent's power structures before they are able to outtake you. And that's about it. Um, it looks like there's a little bit of micromanagement involved. There's not really too much in the way of scouting, it's just a matter of sort of staying ahead of your opponent in terms of controlling the battlefield position. One thing I do like about the Elite mod is that they've um, made sure that some of the lesser used abilities are a little bit more relevant. It seems like all of the heroes at least have some viability, and uh, yeah, just a balancing act to make sure that all of the units see at least a little bit of play. It's very hard to make sure that, you know, you've got that much variety and balance in a real-time strategy game, but at least they've done a lot of work on it, and they're continuing to improve it. One of the most annoying things about Dawn of War back in the day was that it was being supported by a company that was just really slow to the party in terms of keeping up um, game balance, and you know, whenever they fixed one thing, another thing became unuseful. Yeah. Gosh, that really takes me back though. It's got to be about six or seven years, is it, since I was into Dawn of War? So Dawn of War 2 came out in 2009, that's what, six years ago, and then Dawn of War 1 must have been a couple of years before that. So yeah, quite a long time ago. If, um, if Relic did come back, or another company did come back and put out some more Dawn of War content, I'd definitely give it a go. Um, I quite like the way they captured the feel of the Warhammer 40,000 universe and battlefield. Uh, yeah, so guys, another use news, haven't really been playing too much tabletop wargaming, still working on um, another book. I mean, my novel that came out last year, Zero and Aphra, uh, that's something I distributed amongst friends and family, um, I put it on Amazon. But going forward, I'm, I'm working on a, a novel which is a bit more straightforward this time. It'll be high fantasy in the same way that Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones is high fantasy, and the book will be a little bit more entertaining, I think, for a wider audience than my last crack at it, plus I'm collaborating with a guy that has known me for a long time and has uh, read a lot of fantasy stories, so I guarantee that one will be up a lot more people's alley. But yeah, that's the one thing that's been taking up my time and, uh, and so forth outside of work. As far as computer games go, haven't really been playing too much apart from the, the titles I mentioned. I do like to play War Machine and Hordes maybe once every two weeks on a Thursday, but haven't really been attending the, the tournaments. There's a lot of tournaments that happen in New Zealand outside of Auckland City, uh, Wellington, South Island, but yeah, it's just a bit harder for me to get to them. Less disposable income these days, so just been sticking to the local city scene. So this game's about to come to its end. I believe the Eldar have really uh, dominated this game. I think the player uh, in charge of Eldar in this game is, uh, what, Noisy? A guy that seems to be winning all of the replays and watching him in. Here we've got a Corn Blood Letter, which is the, a bit more of a protect up unit for Chaos in this one. Close Combat Beast, and obviously you need to use anti-armor, anti-tank sort of stuff to take him down. In the uh, replays that I've watched for Eldar, it always seems to be the same unit mix. You've got two Dire Avengers squads. Dire Avengers, by the way, replaced uh, Guardians. And that's why uh, the sound of is still keep referring to them as Guardians, but they are in fact Dire Avengers. And uh, single Banshee squad into uh, the Shuriken Cannons, and then maybe support from a Falcon or a uh, Wraith Lord. I don't seem to be seeing them use the, uh, the, the Rangers very much. Um, and of course there are options for, in fact, uh, Fire Dragons, 
Dark Reapers. I never seem to see them in any of these competitive games. It's a shame. I saw an avatar being used at one point, but yeah, very rarely the, the bigger stuff. We D cannons, fire prisms, that sort of thing, which is a shame. Um, in the series I've been watching, I think uh, Farsi has been the most popular one. I actually like using the Farsi the most. Back in Dawn of War 2, I used Warp Spider X just because it's, it was just so satisfying to play and uh, the mass teleport was uh, broken at the time. But I think they've cleared, cleared that up. Uh, the Exarch is no longer the most powerful, and have a look at this, um, Farsi using the Levitate ability, which is something you couldn't really get away with back in the original Dawn of War, has been uh, turned into a bit more of a viable ability. And as you can see, it just shuts down that part of the battlefield. All the cultists can't really do anything, the Chaos Lords are taken out of action there. And um, mass firepower driving back this corn unit, the Juggernaut, Blood Crusher. But uh, victory points way, way, way in favor of Eldar, so even with this Blast Master in position, it's being flanked by a Dire Avenger squad, and uh, that's going to be the end of it. So you guys, I um, hope you guys enjoy um, having a look at uh, Leadbot. If you ever uh, really was a fan of Dawn of War 2 and you wanted to get back into it, I would recommend just downloading it. It's really quick and easy to set up. Just you know, create a separate uh, shortcut to get into it, and um, if you've got the Dawn of War games uh, set up on Steam, Classic Dawn of War Chaos Rising Expansion plus Retribution should be all go, and uh, you might be able to have a bit of fun with it. Anyway, this has been a commentary by Paul. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you next time.